Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Frederick DeGray from H2O Innovation. How are you today, Frederick? I'm very good. Yourself, uh, Tracy? Well, I'd like to start by congratulating you. Your news that you put out yesterday morning about your 3.2 million uh, wastewater deal uh, with the largest uh, EV provider in the United States was quite exciting. The market has responded very positively. Can you give us an update on this, please? Yes, it has been a um, couple of months that we have been working on this uh, new contract um, with them as, a, as an industrial uh, new client of us. Um, but also it provides us the opportunity to, uh, to design uh, a new equipment that we're going to deliver them. Uh, so this first uh, purchase order is actually just for the engineering portion of, of the work. And then it should lead to another purchase order later in the spring for the equipment itself. But um, as you imagine, a, a customer of this profile will obviously lead us to additional opportunities for consumables, for service, and maybe eventually operation and maintenance as well. And of course, many people out there may not be aware of H2O innovation. We were just discussing this about six months ago, prior to your market uh, cap actually doubling. Is it too late for investors to get involved in H2O innovation? Well, we don't believe so. I mean, we are executing. At first place, what matters for me is what we presented at our annual meeting of shoulders, which is a three-year plan, um, where we have revealed the main strategic objectives that we want to go after, which is first growing the company organically and acquire more companies down the road uh, to consolidate our business. So not only we're going to grow the business, but we're going to move the EBITDA performance from a 9.4% to above 11% in the next few years. So is it too late or not too late? But for me, what's matter is that the fundamental, are we executing, are we in line with our budget and are we uh, going after this three-year plan? And yes, this is what we're going. So. Well, obviously, there are many that agree with you. You currently have, what, six analysts uh, providing independent coverage of you presently? That's correct. And the valuations, of course, I don't know that you can actually comment on those. So let for those of you out there that may be new to H2O Innovation, would you mind just giving us some of the competitive reasons why getting into HEO right now is opportune for these investors? Well, first, we are right now the, the only and the largest uh, Canadian pure water play on, on the TSX, TSXV. So, so obviously, we are in the right teams being into the water, but also our business model is quite unique. We have built a business where we have now 90% of our sales that are recurrent by nature. So not only, again, we are in the right space, but we have the right business model. And there's one thing that we have learned through this pandemic that we have been all facing is that water is essential. People are not going to stop drinking water, neither they will stop flushing their toilets. So we have been fortunate enough to continue to operate the business and in a very uh, excellent manner and show performance in the last couple of quarters. I think uh, one thing that perhaps I'd like to draw our audience attention to, and I, I really want to thank Frederick Kozak's coverage for you, was how many of your clients are actually American. Is that not correct? That's right. Uh, we have pretty good base of our clients uh, based in the USA. Well, out of the 700 employees we have, we have close up to 500 of them that are based in the U.S., currently operating uh, slightly uh, about 275 water and wastewater utilities across, you know, United States and Canada. So we're very strong in North America, let's put it this way. And of course, our analyst uh, pinpointed that he thought perhaps the deal you just announced yesterday was with Tesla. Obviously, you can't comment on that or you would have included it in your actual news release. But can I ask you, may I ask you, will you be able to uh, let us know who that is in the future or is that a no comment at this time? Well, sometimes we're limited to um, uh, confidential, uh, confidentiality uh, clause and restriction. Um, so, so this is why we kept the name uh, on reveal at this point. When we can reveal it, uh, obviously we're, we're pleased to do it. But sometimes first we need to respect the customers or that are paying us. 
Now, with this particular model that you deployed with this large EV manufacturer, can you tell me if you're able to sell it to other EV manufacturers? Because we do a lot of coverage here, as you know, Frederick, on that particular sector. Well, it's an area, it's a relatively new area, and, and, and water is everything but fast. So people are slowly adopting, you know, water and best practices with water into their business. Um, if, if, if it's not into the EV sector, it is certainly into other uh, new areas. I mean, not too long ago, we, uh, I would say slightly more than a year ago, we provided water treatment equipment for, for let's put it this way, the largest uh, uh, retail store on the internet in the world, uh, where they were looking for an equipment to reuse their water uh, for the cooling towers, for example. So more and more these new businesses into the new economy are, are providing us opportunities to, to help them out with their water issues. You put out a steady stream of benchmarks and milestones for the company, and we as shareholders really genuinely appreciate that. I noticed in January, mid-January, you put out a news that you wanted kind of highlighting the synergies between your subsidiary uh, Genesis. Would you mind giving us just a few more details on that uh, news release? Well, what's great about, about this, uh, this news release and, and this achievement is that not only we are performing um, even uh, slightly better than what we had anticipated to for Genesis, an acquisition that we completed in November 2019, but right now we are starting to realize new synergies with existing customer of Genesis looking now to expand their offering, expand their portfolio of products, and start to buy other products we have with our other division. So, so what's great is now, and, and it's something we haven't taught at first place when we did the acquisition of Genesis, was we, we looked at it on the perspective of the client, you know, buying our chemistry, buying our chemicals, but not as them being client also for the other business line of H2O, which now is great. Um, so, so these are new synergies that are starting to take place. And again, it's, it's unfortunate that we could not travel as we wanted to, to be able to visit these customers, but still we're able to capture these synergies and, and, and bring down additional profit to the bottom line. One thing I've always enjoyed asking people and Frederick I have to ask you this now you're first of all you're celebrating your 20th anniversary here with the company this year is that correct yeah that's right um, what question do you wish shareholders would ask you or what point would you like to make to shareholders or interested investors right now uh, that you wish you could you know you wish people would talk to you about more often well, the, the water team itself, I think sometimes people uh, lose perspective on what really water is all about and, and how water could influence and will influence more and more population, economy, health, and, and how critical it is. Um, you know, people are suddenly looking at new technologies uh, or following trends of innovation but water is still the only commodity that cannot be replaced by anything else. You can replace energy by other energies. We can subsidize gas with, with solar. You can subsidize solar with, uh, with, um, with wind, but water cannot be replaced by anything else. So, so this commodity itself creates a market of $840 billion out there. And when you think that the largest water treatment company in the world, being Veolia, they have $10 billion into water. If this market is that big, imagine how fragmented this is. So sometimes having the investors take a look, a deeper look at the water industry itself, I think will we'll, we'll tell them where the big investment trends should be and could be. So, Frederick, what should we expect in the upcoming quarter or two? Can you comment? Well, literally, we're going to just continue to execute on our three-year plan. Um, so we should see uh, small tuckings acquisition coming our way uh, that we're going to conclude, as we said. Um, we should continue to, to hit you know, the milestones that we wanted to financially. We're going to report our second quarter results at mid-February. Um, so, so yeah, it's just a matter of continue to execute, continue to grow and be opportunistic for acquisition. Well, as always, thank you for joining us and Hey, join us more often, Frederick. We love your updates. Thank you, Tracy. Look forward to it.